Hello, my name is Harrison Graham and I'm a junior engineering student here at Trinity University. Today I will take you through the step-by-step -step process of the magical toaster. Thank you and enjoy the ride! Hello, my name is Garrett Rapport. Are you guys ready to get toasted? We're going to be taking apart a toaster here in a second, so get ready. Hi, my name is Chris Lee and you better take your sweaters off because it's about to get toasty. Hello, my name's Derek Horvath. Toast, 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 toast. What do you put in a toaster? Wrong! You put bread in a toaster oh. and then it becomes toast. The toaster oven has a stainless steel shell that is very thin and flimsy, which could easily be dented, but provides a nice, clean look. The timer from the toaster ranges from a few minutes all the way to 60 minutes and is made out of plastic. The heat dial is very similar to the timer and is made of plastic and allows for different settings such as broil or just different temperatures ranging from 0 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The toaster oven comes with a couple of accessories, like this aluminum crumb catcher that would be nice to have to catch any juice or crumbs that fall while heating whichever food you like, and this toasting rack which is large enough to fit 4 pieces of bread or even a 9 inch pizza. However, this model comes with a short cord that is only about 18 inches long and would be nice for just placing in the counter next to an outlet. But this restricts where the toaster oven can be placed in your kitchen. Getting the toaster rack inside the oven was a bit difficult and caused us to create a few scratches inside the oven while trying to get it in. This is what the toaster looks like with all of the accessories inside of it. Its size allows for it to be stored in a cupboard or with its stainless steel finish, it can be a great addition to a modern stainless steel kitchen theme, making it appealing to be just left on the counter to be noticed with the other appliances in the room. To work the toaster, you first must place the heat dial on the desired setting. Then, to start toasting, you must turn the timer to the desired time. But note, you must turn it far enough and then choose how toasted you want your bread to be. You can turn the timer enough to turn the toaster oven on without engaging the timer. This is a major flaw, resulting in leaving the toaster on until you manually turn it off, which creates a huge fire hazard. In addition, if you decide to use the crumb catcher, it blocks off the bottom heating coil and this leads to a very uneven toasting of your food. An example of this is shown in the video. Taking apart the toaster, there were eight screws on the inside and outside of the toaster that held it together, but many of the screws were cross-threaded and crooked, which shows poor manufacturing and is another sign of the cheapness of our model. The only part holding in the bottom release tray was a thin metal wire running through brackets. This was not very sturdy at all and was obviously a cheap alternative to having it connected at each end with ball bearings or something more sturdy that would prevent it from hanging off the bottom when it is disassembled. The legs on the toaster were bolted into the steel body, making them difficult to take off. We had to use pliers and supply a good deal of torque before removing them successfully. Fiberglass insulation was placed in between the roof of the toaster oven and the top of the outer shell but it was cut in an odd shape that did not match the rectangular shape of the top of the toaster. It almost seemed as if it was left over from a previous model and thrown in during production. The door had a spring mechanism that allowed for easy opening and closing. The spring is connected to a lever that is connected to the bottom part of the door, helping the door stay shut during heating instead of just falling open which creates a more efficient heating process by not allowing heat to escape through the front of the toaster oven. The timing mechanism for the toaster does not draw power from the outlet, but this does not mean that it is separate from the other components. The power has to pass through the timing device before the toaster begins heating. This allows for the power to be controlled by the timer and temperature knobs respectively. The power flows through the bell unrestricted. When the timer is on in conjunction with the heating dial, current is able to pass freely through the system, heating the coils and toasting or cooking what is inside. When the bell rings and the timer goes off, it interrupts the flow of current from reaching the rest of the system, effectively turning off the device. The main objective of this toaster oven is to heat and prepare food, such as bagel bites, frozen pizza, hot pockets, and of course toast. Now you may be wondering, how does a toaster produce this heat? Well, it produces heat through electrical current. Electrical current is a flow of electrons through a conductor. In an ideal conductor, the electrons move freely throughout the conducting material without losing energy. However, when you are trying to heat an object, this is not what you are looking for. This is where resistors come into play. A resistor impedes the flow of electrons, forcing them to collide and rub against each other. This creates friction. 
When the friction is created, there is a significant energy loss. This energy is lost as heat and is exactly what allows us to use them in water heating devices, toaster ovens, heating blankets, and light bulbs. So our product, the toaster oven, is relatively inexpensive. It is a fairly low tier model and other than its oven capabilities, has no special attributes that separate it from its competitor's products. While other models might have extra accessories, our toaster oven is affordable and simple to use. The toaster oven is compact and can be used to bake or toast whatever foods you can comfortably fit inside. The toaster oven does have its flaws, but this is to be expected from a base model oven costing $24 at Walmart. Overall, our model of toaster is a simple, low-end model that is made to be affordable for most families. Some cheaper competitors to our toaster only have room for two slices of toast, yet they take up less room. They also lack the oven capabilities of our toaster. The build quality in cheaper toasters is likely of a similarly poor quality to our model. Costly competitors range in both price and features. Similar models of toaster ovens are on the market for much more money, and they offer better build quality and may not exhibit some of the design flaws in our model. A top-of-the-line toaster oven competitor may go for around $100. Alternatively, for more money, toasters with different, more specialized features are available. For example, there are toasters with conveyor belts allowing them to toast large quantities of bread simultaneously. A top-of-the-line model with a conveyor belt may cost up to $500.